So for this Let's Talk Jinx, it's going to be a little bit different because we quite can't go over the patch, even though we do that every two weeks when a new patch drops. There was a holiday in the United States, so everything is delayed one day than usual. However, thanks to sites like Surrender at 20, which compile all this information, we do basically have a lot of what's coming. The patch itself dropping just makes it kind of official, so to speak. So we do have this long list over here, for example, of a lot of buffs, nerfs, and champion adjustments, as well as systems and system nerfs. And of course, as a Jinx channel, we're going to talk about those that would affect Jinx specifically. So, for example, in the champion buffs, and it might be a little hard to see, no matter how much I zoom in, of course, uh, but I, I'll zoom in a little bit anyways. And the nice thing is we can also tab over here when they have a, a bit more of an explanation on some of the changes, at least, that are coming. Like Janna, for example, has a whole change list. We might, she's a support champion that uh, you might see played with Jinx when the Threshes and Leonas and stuff are banned, even though they're really meta right now. So anyways, Nocturne probably doesn't really affect Jinx, whatever change they're doing, unless, of course, you're getting killed by Nocturne's ultimate. Volibear, Yasuo, Yone, even the same thing. Uh, Vagar, not so much. I did have to play once against a Vagar support with a Twitch, and that was really annoying when you put the cage down and then the Twitch would throw the poison in, and you just stew in the poison if you didn't have Flash and kind of just die. Uh, but besides that, you're probably not going to see Vagar down there. Tristana, meanwhile, is like an AD carry. So let's see. Base HP is going from 559 to 600. I think that's just a rounding thing, by the way. Uh, there's a lot of numbers lately and like for the past year or so where they just kind of want to make numbers nice and rounded. So they'll do changes like this. Uh, the HP region, for example, is going from 3.75 to 4. Not Kind of the same thing where maybe the older people that play this game in the older seasons, I mean, remember when they used to have numbers like, oh, HP region would be like 3.7469. It's like, why, why are those the extra numbers there? What does that actually do? And they'd be like, okay, it's 4 now. <laughs> so there you go. Basically, uh, the, the 50 almost HP at level 1 is going to matter um, as well. And then the HP region also being a little bit more as well. Tristana is already considered one of the more safer AD carries because of her jump and her ultimate knocks people away. So even if she doesn't have flash, she still can be very safe. And now they're making her a bit, it's only like a little bit, but a bit more beefier in the early game as well. And I think part of it's like, in a meta where things like Jinx and Caitlyn and stuff, late game champions and DPS champions are meta, you don't see Tristana ever. And that's probably like a red flag for them saying, hey, this should be a, a perfect meta for Tristana and you don't see her. And of course, the joking answer is, well, Tristana wasn't an arcane. So of course, you're not going to see Tristana. But think of it back like in 2017 when they had the Ardent Sensor meta. And even though hyper carries were very meta, you never saw Jinx. Even at Worlds, you only saw Jinx once. And that was it for the whole month of October, the whole tournament. Uh, just once jinx was not good enough despite a meta that favored jinx to be playable and this is kind of the same thing for tristana if you're wondering why she's even getting changes and why they're doing this probably so she can survive the early game a bit better right with lethal, lethal temple changes made it so jinx and caitlin and people can can deal with the early game well enough especially with a thresh tristana not so much i guess so with that being said, what you're going to probably see uh, in the early game phase is if you already kind of harass Tristana or you just never see Tristana, you might still not see Tristana all that much, to be honest. Because honestly, if Caitlyn or Jinx are open, even if Felios, if you play him, why not just go for one of those? Even Jin would be probably better than picking Tristana at the moment, even with these changes. However, it does mean if you do see a Tristana, it's most likely a Tristana main. And what you probably want to do is what you always do against Tristana, keep some distance, make sure you also keep track of the support specifically, because in my personal experience, so this is really opinionated, uh, Tristana is really deadly when you get caught by like the Thresh or the Leona or the Nautilus or something, and then she goes all in with a rocket jump and her E and stuff. So if you just kind of keep in mind if she has an engaged support where that is, even more so than Tristana, uh, she probably I want all in you like first like you i don't think you've ever really seen probably even high elo i don't think i you know, have to think about that but a tristana jump in first and then the support like a leona go in you know what i mean uh unless they're like a duo but uh yeah so keep in mind uh, keep track of the support that will actually help you out as a jinx especially because you're immobile and you want to kind of just hang back behind the minion wave as much as you can uh things like minions do block thresh and Nautilus hooks if you're a new player uh, they don't really block leona's zenith blade though so that's what i mean just keep an eye on them Senna's getting a change, where the Q now slows enemies by 20%, uh, plus 6%, 100% AP, 10%, 100% bonus AD for 2 seconds. Here's the thing about Senna. Senna is in a list of champions, and I think her changes are over here too, but it's basically the same thing still. Uh, she's one of those champions where it's like, oh hey, you're a marksman player that got auto-filled to support, well here's a marksman champion still. All right, but on top of that, even though they're okay with Senna being an, played as an AD carry, they do ultimately and originally made her for the support role. 
Well, what is she missing then to make the support role as prominent as the AD carry role? Probably just a little bit more utility. She already has that in her kit, but like a little bit more focused on that would probably be good. It means that if you're playing Senna support, you still have use for the Q, even though you're not the one building all the damage and stuff, right? Even though you're not doing the, the hunger strat from like last year or the year before, even, right? Like your Q will still slow people, and so your AD carry might be able to actually do more and go in, and maybe it feels a bit better using this ability if you are playing a support, because that's what you got auto filled. Or even if you're playing AD carry, right? A slow is a slow after all, it's gonna feel good. So if you are Jinx, one of the things to worry about here, of course, as I mentioned earlier, is you're an immobile champion. So slows are going to make you even slower. So the thing about this is you want to probably try and not stay as lined up as possible. Uh, make sure you're behind things too. So even if you do get slowed, unless it's like again, a Leona, uh, they can't just go right through the minions to you if you are slowed and take opportunity of the fact that you are slowed. And if you just think that it's going to uh, hit you no matter what, keep the flame choppers on cooldown. Uh, try not to be aggressive with them at all. Basically, never use them. If you if this is a fear of yours when you're going into this lane now, is the slow being what kills you? Uh, just have those flame choppers ready. And the idea is, while you're slowed, you're not immobile or immobiled or uh, unable to move. Is what I'm trying to say. I can't say words. Uh, so you can throw those flame choppers out at whoever then decides to charge in after you uh, while you're slowed, and then the slower wear off, and then you're back to normal. Samira. Now the Samira R damage per bullet is going from 10, 0, 10, and 20 plus 50 AD to 5, 15, and 25 plus 50 percent AD. And the thing here to remember, like Samira, if you don't know who Samira is, it's basically Dante from Devil May Cry. So you know uh, Devil Trigger, and uh, they have that in there. Basically, they have a, a couple things in here, style points and everything on this champion. But uh, her ultimate is the one. If you don't, if you want a visual rep like idea, if you don't know anything about either of those, um, that's fine. She spins around while firing her guns a lot. And so even though it's only 10, say, damage a bullet, especially at level six where it says zero there, well, first of all, it's going to five, but it's also 50% AD. So if she has 200 AD, for example, that means 50% of that is 100. So it's actually 105 damage per bullet, and she fires a lot of bullets. It's like Katarina's ultimate. If you know Katarina the assassin in the mid lane where she spins around and throws a lot of blades out, kind of that kind of an idea. So. Besides the ultimate though, nothing else changes. So if you're someone who's like, I can bully Samira with Jinx from levels one through six with these anyways, they didn't change anything about Samira one through six. So you're still gonna be able to do that. And if the ultimate has really been the game changer for you, then it's gonna do a little bit more damage. And maybe when you hit six, if you don't have prio on the lane, you might wanna back off and just maybe freeze the lane towards your tower. Freezing the lane means you have the minion wave set right before your tower. So your tower is not killing minions, but you're still getting the farm and XP from the minions themselves, and you keep the minion wave basically held there by letting the minions kind of kill each other, but like killing enough of the enemy minions so that your minions can kind of keep flowing in and their minions will crash, and it makes it a long lane for the enemy bot lane. Uh, and the benefit of that is when you have a jungler who sees that, they're gonna be like, hey, that's an easy gank lane though, because the enemy's not pushed up under their tower, they're almost at your tower, which means if I come and gank right now, we're gonna kind of pincer them, and it's great. So if, if that's been a thing for you when it comes to this champion as Jinx, there you go. We go to some champion nerfs. I've heard a lot of talk about Zed. I'm always biased as an AD carry player. Zed is my favorite assassin when I do play assassins. Uh, but I've heard some stories that off of just like half of an assassin item, he's like popping people uh, pretty easily apparently. Uh, so his R base damage is going from 100% AD to 65% AD. So if you've been in that scenario, like as Jinx and stuff, because people will play things like Zed against Jinx, where you've just got like just half of, like I said, like a serrated Dirk, he goes in and just kills you. Well, he's going to have significantly less damage on the R to proc now. So maybe that's going to feel a little bit better, uh, perhaps. Lulu, because she is a support champion, even in pro play, a lot of pro players are starting to play Lulu as a counter to Thresh and Leona in the bot lane. Uh, the W cooldown is going from 16, 15, 14, 13, and 12 seconds to 17, 16, 15, 14, and 13 seconds. So only one second extra, which can make the difference in like pro play, but I think in regular play, probably not. A lot of people tend to hold on to their cooldowns for moments, so it's probably not going to affect solo queue too much. Champion adjustments. Uh, Tom Kinch has a lot of his gray health stuff being adjusted, so a lot of some increased stuff. If there's more than two enemies nearby, uh, the movement speed, I believe, and as well as the amount of gray health is being changed, and the ally cast on the R 
uh, now slows Tom Crinch, or used to slow him for 30, 20, and 10%, but now instead grants him 40% movement speed for 3 seconds, which makes sense. The whole point of that champion having that ability and be able to use it on allies is to save their lives. So that's actually kind of nice, to be honest, that it's not slowing people. Like, you're, you're, it's not just like a wild, like, growth Lulu thing. You're, the whole idea is to grab somebody, your ally who's, like, in the pit of fire, and just carry them out and carry them away from the pit of fire. Now, if they're a chaotic person, they're just going to run and jump back into the fire, and you're just going to sit there defeated, and you're like, why am I even playing support? Why do I do this? But for the most part, that's not what happens, and yeah, you can actually, like, save people and run away. That's great. Uh, Janna, for example, we jump back over here, because the Janna list is, uh, it's, it's pretty big. It's a pretty big list and I this video will be too long if we go over it all in full but in short things like her passive is no longer gonna get give eight movement speed by default it's just when moving towards allies um, they, they're trying to encourage her to auto attack a bit more often so she can harass and lane the uh, tornado the howling gale for that matter uh, the travel time is uh, the, like the channel I believe for it or the distance for it is going down from uh, 1.5 seconds to 1.25 seconds the range is being increased but the minimum range is also being increased uh, Zephyr is also getting some slow duration increases and the cooldowns being increased, the damage being increased. Basically what they want uh, Janna to do is kind of be more of a, a harassing enchanter support. Um, kind of a thing. That's an oversimplification, but if you're playing with the Janna, basically she's going to probably want to be up more in auto attacking instead of hanging back a bit like she might have used to do in past metas. And the R Monsoon tick rate, the healing on it, remains the same. But the tick rate is being lowered from half a second to a quarter second. So that's going to be interesting to see. So uh, we'll see what that going forward. So if you're playing against a Janna, it might benefit you. If you're someone that feels like you feel comfortable harassing Janna with the rockets, for example, she's going to be trying to post up a bit more in lane to get some harass in. So there you go. Uh, system buffs. Uh, no one builds Rallies and Lichbane on Jinx. I want to I want to answer this real quick. Someone asked actually about uh, do a like effects and stuff trigger on fish bones when you use them. Funny enough, fun fact though, Rallies Crystal Scepter. It used to do this, and I haven't tested it in a while, so I don't know if it does it anymore. But when you used to build this on Jinx, if you for some reason were building AP Jinx, maybe you're playing an Ultimate Bravery uh, in a custom game, right? Um, and you would fire this, the target you were hitting did not get slowed, but everything that was hit by the splash AoE damage would get slowed. So if you were in a team fight and you hit a Caitlyn with this, she would not be slowed. But if like Vi and like Corky or something were around her, they would be slowed or minions would be slowed. It was weird how that worked, but it was kind of interesting. AoE having stuff like that on it. Um, but yeah. Now this one's going to be interesting, of course. Lethal Tempo, the big one that people feel is why things like Jinx and stuff are super meta, and why they were hoping Jinx specifically didn't get nerfed, and instead this got nerfed instead. Uh, the attack speed per stack is going from 13% on melee and 7% on range. I don't know if you guys can see those as well, especially if you're on mobile, I'm sorry, but they have a little sword to represent melee and a bow and arrow to represent range, to 10 to 15% melee and 5 to 9% on range. So basically what they're doing on both is they're nerfing it early game, but making it beneficial late game. And what's nice about that is because historically Riot does this thing where they'll nerf a champion, and then they'll actually nerf the problem, and then never buff the champion back, and so that champion just feels like they're in a terrible spot. This time they've actually, at the beginning, like season 12 might be the year, uh, they nerfed the problem instead, which was lethal tempo. But in a way that's kind of nice because it, it makes a lot of late game champions kind of safe early, and it doesn't anymore, but now it's even more powerful late game if they do get to that late game. So Jinx's spot in the meta might be fine because as long as she can get back to that late game with this item and with this, uh, might be this rune, uh, she might actually still be actually more powerful than she was because it only went up to 7% and now it's going to be up to 9% late game. Just early game is going to be a little bit rougher, which is fine. It's kind of how it should be. She's a late game champion. She's supposed to scale like a snowball, not be a boulder out the gates. I understand. I'm fine with it as long as they don't have to actually touch Jinx. Cool. Now, again, quick reminder before we end the video, this all is uh, scheduled to come out a day later than originally planned. So by the time the actual patch officially drops, which will be on Thursday, things might change. They might have decided, oh, we want to take this out. We want to put this in the Janna changes. We want to move those to the next patch. That's like a finalized decision they do sometimes. We'll see. So take this video with a grain of salt, but I thank you for watching the video this long. So thank you so much for watching this video. Again, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification, the extra subscribe button, but I don't know which video will be next because I can have a lot of kinks. So until next time, take care. GG, get jinxed. Thank you for watching and enjoy pizza responsibly.